Uh, hello, Redmond family. Uh, I'm Gail Goodmans, my wife, Toya, and we have the opportunity to speak from our hearts. So thank you for allowing us the platform, and without further ado, we'll get started. All right, so how have the recent events affected you and your family? Well, um, before we dive in, I do want to say that what we're sharing here is me and Gail's personal experience. I am not speaking on behalf of any other black person. I'm not even speaking on behalf of um, our parents or grandparents or anyone else who's experienced racism. These are our, you know, our testimonies basically. So um, yeah, so we'll start with that. Okay. And then to answer the first question is um, how the recent events impacted your family. I will say that for me, um, they really have not. Um, this is not the first conversation that we've had with each other about racism, with our children about racism. This isn't the first time I've shared it with friends about um, experiences that we've had to endure. This is certainly not the first Black life loss of Black men or Black women. So unfortunately, it does not change too much at all for us, except just being traumatized over and over again with the repeated images on social media and the news. I have a bit of a different perspective. So it, for me, it's a, it's a sober reminder of how, as a black man in America, you can be treated by law enforcement. Uh, I, I recall as a younger man, a teenager, I would leave the house with confidence as I got in my car and drove to wherever I was going to go. But now I find myself a bit more apprehensive when I see a police car following behind me. Um, so it's, it's, just, it's just a reminder of, of who I am and, and what, I, what I represent to people and how they perceive me. And I, I just have to, I feel like I, I need to be more careful. Make sure I use my turn signal and don't go too fast and all that stuff. But, but what matters is who I am and that if I get stopped, I'm going to be treated differently than if I were a of a different ethnicity, we'll say that, unfortunately. All right, um, so what would you want your church family to understand? Um, just like you said, that as Black people, we have a different experience. And um, part of our life as military, as a military family, is that we move a lot, we move around a lot, you know, new neighborhoods, new churches, classrooms, et cetera. And a lot of times um, we are one of one or one of few minority families. And so I always try to use that platform um, to just share and be authentically me. And by that, I mean, I don't hide <laughs> any parts of my identity and I'm willing to share information about my race. I like to try to be a safe space um, for people to ask questions and non-Black people to um, ask me questions and I try to um, share my experiences with an open heart. Now, what I want the church family to know is that when I put myself out there and when I'm vulnerable like that, it is, it can be hurtful when people question the validity of your experience. And something that I find within Christian, you know, um, communities is that sometimes they'll say, um, but we're all part of the human race. While that is true, and that is how God created us to all be equal, that is oftentimes not our reality, and that's not, that's not reflected in our day-to-day -day treatment. So minimizing um, my experience or refusing to see my blackness is hurtful, and that's what I would like people to know. I would like, sure, I, I would like people to appreciate that as a black man in America, my experience is different than others. Let me, let me, let me give you an example. So back when I was with the squadron, uh, I was in a shop division of about maybe a dozen people. And it was all men and there was one young lady in the shop. Uh, she was about maybe 20 years old, so she was a junior sailor. And the, the conversation went to packing and one guy was going on a trip and he didn't have enough room in his suitcase or something like that. And 
we were trying to figure out how to solve this dilemma for this guy without having him to pay extra money. Or what have you. And so the young lady in the shop suggested, why don't you bring another suitcase? And one of the men replied with, we're not doing that, we're not women. And everyone laughed. And in that instant, I felt awkward and uncomfortable for that young lady because here she is trying to serve her country, trying to do her job, trying to be a part of the group and fit in, what have you. And she was reminded of her gender and that she was different in front of the whole group. And they all got to laugh at her expense. And that, at that moment, I understood, whereas perhaps previously I would get training or something on sensitivity about sexism and harassment and how we should treat people, women specifically, and I, I may have been dismissive about it, but in that moment, I got it. So what I want people to understand is that if you haven't been a, in minority, where you're the only woman, for example, in a, in a room full of men, or the only uh, ethnic minority in a room full of the majority, if you've never been that, then you don't get it. So you, you, you won't understand. And you just, you don't know how it feels to be like that. So just even if you don't believe what people say, if you think it's exaggerated, or you think we're being, uh, we're overemphasizing it, if you haven't experienced it, then you don't get it. So just try and be sensitive to other people's experiences in our, in our perspectives. Okay. Next question is, how has your faith helped you during this time? Um, so for me, it's encouraging to know that even if we don't get it right here and um, we never fix the problem, I hope we do, but if we don't, that it won't be like this in heaven, that there will be equality, there will be, um, you know, no differences between creed or color, and we will get it right in heaven. So that's encouraging. Um, one thing that helps me. And another thing is that um, only God can change hearts and minds. And while I continue to try to do my part and to be light and to, you know, show the love of Christ of all, to all, um, it's not my job to fix other people. So <laughs> all I can do is what God commanded me to do. And, you know, I hope that we get to see um, that we can reconcile and fix these issues, especially within our church. Um, but if we don't, it will be right in heaven. Oh, um, oh how sorry, is your faith? Yeah. Um, for me, it, it is a bit, it's a bit more concerning driving the streets of America nowadays, seeing what's, what happens to people. Uh, especially black people uh, at the hands of the police. But I take solace in the fact that I serve a God who controls the hearts of kings. And just like he did with Pharaoh and Exodus, he controlled his heart. Uh, God controls the hearts of every police officer patrolling the streets. So as long as God has a purpose for me on this earth, then I'll be okay because God controls their hearts. All right. Amen. Okay, how can Redland be a part of the solution? Oh, me? Okay. Uh, well, it doesn't matter. Okay, I'll, I'll go first. Okay. I, I think forums like this uh, are helpful. I think it's, I think what helps people um, cure, so to speak, the, uh, their either biases or prejudices is getting to know people. And I, I would hope that people would get to know me uh, not that I represent all black people, but just get to know me and my family and just see that I'm just like you. I'm a person. I believe red blood. Uh, I love my family. I love God. So I, I, think, I think an open dialogue and, and forms like these are helpful. And I just want people, if you don't believe it, that's, that's fine. I'm not looking for sympathy. I just want people to have an open mind and a soft heart and just be sensitive to the, to the, concerns that face uh, your Christian brothers, to myself, my, my family. Um, and I would say that I also appreciate the conversation and the conversations that are being started in homes. Um, but I would like um, more sustained action. So I hope to see this, I hope this is a, you know, a start for 
many, many millions of people um, around the globe to put a stop to this. And to me, that means speaking up when you see injustices in your household, in your family, at, you know, like wherever your, your environment is, that you will take a stand and not allow it to continue in your presence. Um, I would like to see um, us devoting funds and us as the body of Christ devoting funds to communities of color and organizations that are fighting towards the dismantling racism in this country. And I would also like to see us serving with one another to help these communities. And not just like Gail, Toya, Trey, and Eli, because you know us and like we deserve, you know, justice or fair treatment, but for all the um, black and brown people in this world, those who people wouldn't think that are deserving, you know, because God calls us to love all. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, Hope to see y'all soon. Yeah, thank you.